in our previous talk, we dealt with <clears throat> dependent origination. <clears throat> or the law of a causal relation. Sometimes this dependent origination or the law of a causal relation is used as a Padishya Samopada Chaka. Padeja Samopada means uh, the law of a causal relation. Chaka means wheel. So it's uh, translated into the wheel of the, the law of a causal relation or the wheel of a dependent origination. Because when <clears throat> a cause, a condition arises, then there arises its effect. That effect itself becomes a condition, a cause. Then that condition, a cause, produced another effect then that effect himself becomes the condition of cause, then it causes another effect. In this way, the train of a cause and effect <clears throat> never ends. It becomes a <clears throat> round and round as a circle of dependent origination. So that's why it's called as Paticca Samopada Chaka, the wheel of a dependent origination. <clears throat> Then, <clears throat> if we are in the wheel of this divine origination, how can we get rid of it? We can't rid of it, get rid of it, because we have to goes round and round along this circle of uh, the wheel of dependent origination. But <clears throat> the Buddha said, it's the ignorance that makes living beings goes round and round along the, the circle of the divine origination. If that ignorance is replaced by right understanding or wisdom, then we can get, we can cut off this is circle <clears throat> at the link. Then we can get rid of it. So to free from this wheel of divine origination, what we should try is to have or to acquire wisdom 
at the insight and the enlightenment. <clears throat> Any wisdom acquired through learning or thinking, reasoning, is not conducive to our deliberation, our liberation from the circle of this divine origination. Only the wisdom acquired through direct experience of Nama and Rupa, mental and physical phenomena, which con constitute so-called Rapazan of being, and also which constitute so uh, constitutes the wheel of a divine origination. <clears throat> Can cut off this circle and uh, enable us to get rid of it. That is why the Buddha said, the first truth, the truth of suffering, Dukkha Satya, is a prayaya, the true which must be thoroughly realized, <clears throat> or which must be rightly understood. as a suffering. <clears throat> so, the whole of divine origination, or the wheel of this divine origination, consists in both Nama and Rupa, mental and physical phenomena which is it the truth of a suffering. <clears throat> so we should try to realize some of the links of this divine origination or the train of this divine origination if we are able to rightly understand one or uh, one of the links of this wheel of a dependent origination, we are sure to cut it off and to get rid of it. <clears throat> Then, here, <clears throat> we say this, the wheel of this defining origination is, consists in, in both the mental and physical phenomena. In another word, we can say, The whole of this divine origination is <clears throat> pipe aggregates, aggregates of mental phenomena, aggregate of feeling or sensation, aggregate of a perception, aggregate of a mental formations, and uh, aggregate of consciousness. So, <clears throat> the Buddha said, when we are able to realize um, any of uh, these uh, pipe aggregates, 
then we can get rid of this cycle of <clears throat> divine origination and uh, free from get free from suffering. Here, <clears throat> we have to be born, reborn, because of the action which is done in the previous existence and the attachment for the existence. That action is a done because of a grasping. A strong desire to be reformed. So the action is done. The strong desire or attachment or grasping arises depending on the attachment or tanna desire. That tanna or desire or attachment arises dependent on the feeling or sensation. <clears throat> Here, the feeling can be classified in six. The feeling that arises from unconsciousness, the feeling arises from ear consciousness, the feeling from uh, arises from tongue consciousness. The feeling arises from the nose consciousness. The feeling arises from the body consciousness. The feeling arises from the mind. In another word. The consciousness of a seeing a visible thing causes the feeling to arise. In the same way, the consciousness of hearing, the consciousness of smelling, consciousness of taste, consciousness of a feet, tangible thing, consciousness of a mind object, causes the feeling to arise. So, the feeling is <coughs> divided into six. Whatever feeling or sensation it may be, must be thoroughly realized. Unless it is a feeling, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling or neutral feeling. Unless this feeling is not realized as it really is, that feeling causes attachment to arise. It conditions the att attachment now. When the feeling, uh, when the tanha arises, as you know, tanha attachment is the second truth, the truth of the cause of suffering, samudhya sajja. All sufferings are caused by this attachment. This attachment is the immediate cause of 
all kinds of suffering in this existence and the following existences. So that's why this attachment or tanna or desire is <coughs> the called Samudhya Satya. The Buddha names this Etana as a Samudhya Satya, the cause of uh, suffering, the origin of uh, suffering, the immediate cause of uh, suffering. When we are attached to any living beings or non-living things, when we are attached to any living beings or non-living things, it's sure we would have suffering <coughs> because of both the attachment to that living beings or non-living things. So if we are attached to our parents, our families, our sons, our daughters, our friends, that attachment is sure to cause, to give us, to give rise to suffering for us about these living beings, say, when we are attached to our friends, we love him, we have a very strong affectionate for him, but one day, He has died of some illness or disease. We feel sad. We feel sorrow. Sometimes we may have a lamentation over the death of our friends. That sadness is suffering, dukkha. <clears throat> Mental suffering. If we feel sad about the death of our friend, for the death of our friend, say one month or two months or three months, then they, yeah, we have a physical suffering too. <clears throat> so in this way, the attachment is the cause of suffering. Even if we are attached to even our meditation, then that attachment creates a, a great deal of suffering in us, both mental and physical suffering. When we are attached to our meditation, we are greedy to make progress in meditation. We strive our best day and night, but we can't, we are not able to improve our meditation as much as we wish to. Then we feel it disappointed. Sometimes we feel, we feel sad. 
power being unable to make progress in our meditation. Sometimes we are worried about the progress. Sometimes we are in desperation because we think our meditation is hopeless. This uh, disappointment, sadness, worry, desperation are the result or the effect of uh, the attachment to our meditation. So even the attachment to meditation is uh, the cause of a suffering. So it's uh, called a samuriya satya. Then what we should do when we have attachment to our meditation? Sometimes, <clears throat> though we are able to progress in meditation, our concentration is deep, the insight clear, it penetrates into impermanent suffering, impersonal nature of uh, mental states of physical process, which observed. We are happy. We are satisfied with our progress in meditation. We enjoy it. Then we become attached to it. To our good experiences, a better experience in meditation. But <clears throat> this progress in meditation is also impermanent. One day, for some reason, our concentrations are broken. There are many thoughts, several thoughts are going here and there. We observe thinking, thinking. The more we note the thinking, <clears throat> the more thinking becomes. It's then We feel sad. We feel sad sometimes. We feel to crying over the failure in our meditation and also the lo the loss of the good experience that we had yesterday and the day before yesterday. Then these suffering, mental sufferings are caused by attachment to our good experience or better experience in meditation. Then this attachment Tanha, desire, <clears throat> is a disadvantage for us. Then we should not have it. But if there is a feeling or sensation about any object, That feeling or sensation <clears throat> is sure to cause this attachment to arise.
we can't do it. Then, what should we do not to have this attachment to even our meditation or not to have attachment to any living beings or non-living things or any dharma? Yes, when we realize that there's attachment to our meditation or our progress, it must be observed as it is, so that we are able to realize these attachments as it is. Noting as attachment, 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 attachment. As long as attachment is there, we should continue to observe it until it has disappeared. But there's a, the other way. Attachment arises depending on feeling or sensation. Then, if we are able to realize the impermanence and suffering, emphasis and nature of this feeling or sensation, we won't have, we won't have attachment because we are realizing the rising and passing away of a feeling and sensation and. Being oppressed by appearance and disappearance, and also this is the process of mental phenomena which is ever changing, arising and passing away. If we are able to realize this feeling, a sensation in this way. In other words, if you are realized, able to realize the specific and general characteristics of this feeling or sensation, there won't arise any attachment at all. So, in the Buddhist scriptures, it's said that if you want to get rid of this wheel of a divine origination, you should cut it off at the link of a feeling or a sensation. If you cut the attachment when it arises, you may be able to overcome it, you may be able to eradicate it at that moment, but when there yeah, arises a feeling or sensation, then it will cause this attachment again to rise. So what you should do is uh, to destroy the attachment. You have to uproot its the cause, the root, its the cause. That is a feeling or sensation. It means uh, Whenever you feel about your progress in meditation, uh, whenever you feel pleasant sensation, happy, rapture, about your progress in meditation, that feeling should be noted, happy, 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 until that happiness has disappeared. When the happiness 
is it disappear or when you are able to realize the appearance and disappearance of the happiness feeling then there will not arise any attachment from this happiness so when you see happiness as a natural process of arising in person way <coughs> of a phenomenon then you won't have any attachment at all because you do not take happiness as a person who is happy about his progress in meditation you do not take it to be a person or a meditator because happiness is a neither a person no be a neither a meditator not an ordinary man what's it that it's a ever changing process of feeling or sensation that's all if you realize in this way this happiness in this way you won't have any idea of a person or being or happy person happy meditator happy me or happy i then you don't have attachment to your progress in meditation the attachment is the cause of suffering if the attachment has been removed there won't arise any suffering at all <clears throat> so whatever you feel about your worldly affairs or your meditation you should observe it that that feeling may be pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling a neutral feeling it's a very rare to realize the neutral feeling because a neutral feeling is very subtle so the scripture says neutral feeling is a very very subtle so it should be regarded as pleasant feeling so it's a uh, it's a difficult to observe neutral feeling and also there are very rare occasions when we have to experience a neutral feeling <coughs> most of the time we have to observe pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling sukha vedana or dukha vedana that's why we have to observe when we the pain when we have a painful sensation or when you have the unpleasant physical sensation such as pain stiffening itching numbness and so on these are unpleasant sensation unpleasant sensation also causes the attachment to arise because when we feel painful sensation then we want to have uh, the pleasant sensation such as harmony and happiness and so on depending on the unpleasant sensation we long for pleasant sensation or we have a desire to have a pleasant sensation so when we are able to realize that this is a pain for sensation as arising person we the phenomenon the ever changing phenomenon of arising person we 
Uh, yes. The experience of uh, unpleasantness of a tangible thing. If we realize that, we don't have any idea of me or my personal being. We don't have the idea. I am painful. I feel painful sensation. My knee is aching. My leg is numb. This idea of a, a person and being itself can be removed by the right understanding of the painful sensation as just natural process of uh, feeling, sensation, which is uh, <coughs> ever-changing and arising and passing away. Then in this way, when we are able to realize the feeling or sensation within and two aspects, the aspect and the aspect of specific characteristics and the uh, aspect of general characteristics. Then we don't take this feeling, either painful feeling or happy feeling, to be a person and be itself. Then there won't arise any at attachment at all. When the attachment doesn't arise, they won't have any suffering. They won't arise any suffering at all. Then here, we get free from suffering of a divine origination. As you know, at the end of the in the conclusion passage of Padija Samupada, Divine Origination, the Buddha said, In this way, a big heap of suffering arises. <clears throat> So the Buddha said, this is wheel of a divine origination is uh, the big heap of a suffering. Ewa me tasa dukha kandasa samudhiyo hodi. So any link of this Padaisa Mupara or this train of Padaisa Mupara, divine origination to suffering. The, the first one, avijja, ignorance is suffering. The second one, sankhara, action, wholesome action and unwholesome action is also suffering. The third, vijnana, all consciousness, beginning with the first consciousness of an existence is also suffering. Then Namarupa, the process of a mental and physical phenomenon, are suffering. Then Salayadana, the six sins basis or the six six doors, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, are also suffering. Then, pasa contact is a suffering. Vedana feeling is a suffering. Tanna desire or attachment is suffering. Upadana grasping is a suffering. <clears throat> Bhava action is a suffering. And jadi rebirth 
it's the suffering. Jara, decayed, suffering. Marana, death, suffering. Soka, sorrow, worry, suffering. Pre-deva, lamentation, suffering. Dukkha, pain or physical suffering. Then dominus are grief, mental suffering. Upayas are desperation. This is the end of a Pritichasamubhara, suffering. So the Buddha said, the whole of this wheel of a divine origination is a, a big heap of a suffering. But if a person is a not be aware of, is a not aware of uh, these uh, mental states and physical process, he is ignorant of the reality of um, physical and mental phenomena. So he won't be able to rightly understand suffering. So he takes suffering to be a happy process a satisfactory process. But though he take it to be happy and satisfactory process, but actually the reality is not what he as what he thinks, not as he thinks. The reality is uh, ever changing of a ever changing phenomena which arises and passes with constantly and instantly. So it's a suffering. That's why the Buddha said the truth of a suffering is a prayer to be thoroughly realized, to be rightly understood, so that the, his disciple can realize the reality as it is, and to strive their best to get rid of this suffering. <clears throat> So here, when you want to get rid of this suffering, its cause must be destroyed. The cause of a suffering is attachment, tanha, samuriya, satya. The cause of a suffering then to remove or to uproot this tanha attachment, the cause. You need to rightly understand dukkha, suffering as a suffering as it is. <clears throat> All mental, physical phenomena. To rightly understand all mental states and physical process as impermanent, suffering, and impersonal nature. What you need is you are may should be concentrated on any mental state arising, any mental states of physical process <clears throat> from moment to moment as it is. To realize all mental states and physical process, or any mental states and physical process, as it really is, you need some degree of a concentration. Your mind should be concentrated to a certain extent 
on any mental states or physical process which is observed or which is arising at this moment. To have uh, this some degree of deep concentration, you need to acquire a sharp and powerful mindfulness of mental and physical phenomena. So that's why the scripture said, <clears throat> Meditator should be stata vihari. Stata here literally means uh, incessant or uh, continuous. Vihari means uh, living. How? Uh, constant and continuous living with mindfulness. That's a satata vihari. It means that meditator must have a constant and continuous uninterrupted mindfulness so that he can acquire a, some degree of a deep concentration which it gave rise to the insight, clear insight into phenomena. So to have this continuous, constant and sharp mindfulness, you need strenuous effort. Without strenuous effort, your mindfulness be mindfulness cannot be constant, cannot be continuous, cannot be sharp enough. It's only enough effort or strenuous effort, which is called a badana, that <coughs> gives rise to constant and continuous mindfulness. If a meditator feel lazy, is a mindfulness it can never be continuous, it can never be sharp. Laziness is the enemy of the effort, strenuous effort. <clears throat> so, though you have a strenuous effort and sharp mindfulness, sometimes the mind doesn't stay with the object, either mental states or physical process. It is struggle to go out, to wonder, to think about something else. Then, then we need a mental factor to keep the mind to the object or to direct the note and mind to the object all of the time. That mental factor that keeps the mind to the object, directs the mind to the object, is called Sama Sankapa, right thought. So here, you may know the right understanding is a samadhiti, right understanding or insight into phenomena, rising and passing away. Concentration is a samadhi, right concentration. Mindfulness of any mental states of physical process is a samma sati, right mindfulness. Effort, enough effort, a strenuous effort is samma vayama, right effort. 
the mental factor that keeps the mind to the object is right thought, Sama Sangapa. There are five factors of the Noble Eightfold Path working together on this mental states and physical process. But the other three factors are helpful to these five factors. What are they? They are abstention from bad speech, abstention from bad deed, abstention from bad livelihood, abstention from bad speech is a samawacha, abstention from bad deed or action is a samakamanda, abstention from but livelihood is a sama ajiva. And also we can say abstention from round speech, round deed, and round livelihood. There are three kinds of abstention. Abstention from round speech is a sama vajja. Abstention from round deed or actions is a sama kamanda abstention from round livelihood is sama ajiva. While you we are mindful of uh, any mental states of physical process with some degree of a deep concentration then the mind is concentrated on each object one after another continuously, incessantly. At that time we are abstaining from round speech, round detail, round livelihood. They are called the group of a sila morality, this is Theresa. When we observe a precept, we are abstaining from these three kinds of brown deeds, brown speech, brown livelihood. Then our deed and speech are purified. In other words, our morality is, is purified because our morality is purified, our mind is clear, happy, tranquil. So this state of uh, clarity, tranquility, is a very much a conducive to our mind to be concentrated on any mental states of physical process which is observed. So the five mental factor which are working together on the path that leads us to the cessation of a suffering. And the other three factors it helpful, helps the, these five factors to make progress. So altogether, eight factors of the novel parts is developed. So it's called the Noble Eightfold Path. Noble Eightfold Path, which leads to right understanding of Dukkha Satya, realization of Dukkha Satya, mental states and physical process. Because by the power of this 
the Noble Eight Path, we are able to realize the truth of our suffering as it is. So, we are not attached to any mental states of physical process. The attachment has been removed. Samurya Satya, the cause of the suffering. When the cause of Samurya Satya is removed, then there won't arise any suffering at all. When the cause is removed, there won't arise any effect. So here, suffering ceases to exist, and then we live in peace and happiness. The cessation of suffering is Nirodha Satya, Nibbana. That's why the Buddha said to develop these, develop these noble eightfold path so as to realize Samudhiya Satya, the truth of the suffering, and to remove the attachment and the experience, the senses, remove the attachment, Samudhiya Satya, and the experience, the cessation of suffering, Nirora Satya. Then we have got rid of the cycle of a dependent origination. If we are able to attain the final stage of enlightenment, which approves all mental defilements, which is included in dependent origination. So may all of you rightly understand how your mindfulness meditation can lead you to realize uh, how your mindfulness meditation, Magasatya, can lead you to realize the truth of suffering, Dukkha Satya, and eradicate the attachment, Samuriya Satya, and experience the cessation of suffering, Nirora Satya. And try your best and attain the cessation of suffering, Nirora Satya.